G'day all and welcome. The time has finally come to build my high range 2022 PC. I'm going to walk you through it. It's going to be an insane video. I'm super excited as you can probably tell already. Let's get stuck into it as I'm sure I can explain a lot more while building it at the same time. So the tools we're going to need straight away if I move this camera out of the way. I got one up top above me so hello and then one off to the side which I can move around as you'll see eventually nice up and close high definition on the left side both using my camera and my iPad funny enough or tablet whatever you want to call it and my phone as the high definition so tablet up top lower definition camera on the side moving around which will be the higher definition so we've got some pliers some pliers some nippers We've got some different types of screwdrivers, flathead. We've got two different types of manual uh, Phillips head, which is the X, as you can probably tell. And we've got a smaller one. The one in the middle I actually just bought from Amazon. I'm pretty sure I'll be putting all the prices in Aussie dollary dues and US dollars on the screen for you in my editing phase. But I'm yet to use this big boy. Um, it's going to be quite good. If I can get it out of the box, it would be awesome. This is an automatic screwdriver with different torque settings. I think it was like 30 or 40 dollars. I can't remember if I got this one on special also because this is just about uh, July, August time. So right after the GPU kind of came back in terms of prices like better. So over here we got our Arctic thermal compound for our CPU. Got a little knife so I can open some stuff open. Uh, open some stuff open, nice work Sharpie. I've actually got this little broken clock handle uh, just to help smear the thermal paste on the CPU. Just trying something a little different and I couldn't find the little scoopy thing. Uh, Anti-static wrist. I uh, will be connecting that to the PSU. My RM1000X Corsair. No, I'm not sponsored in any way, shape or form. Uh, you'll want some cable ties, uh, the more the merrier, for the fact that you'll want to cable manage as many times as possible and you'll be cutting and trimming and changing and moving them all over the place, so the more the merrier. Uh, these are some screws plus more off camera that I do have, all in my motherboard box from my old 2017 PC, which was the last time I actually built one of these, so it's going to be really good. Been looking forward to it, but as always, there's always nerves when you're building a new PC. Second time building it, but we should be good anyways. Ignore my handwriting, that was just a little intro bit, just to see if I could get it all done. So, let's clean this up. I'm going to open up this power supply and get that plugged in, but not actually connected to any electricity whatsoever. So I can get this little doodad on and hook that up to either... Probably my ankle, so it's out of the way and out of the out of sight. So I'll be back in one sec. Using my monitor box as a permanent stand, as I haven't even taken anything practically out of the box just yet. So this is going to be an unboxing as well as a build. So I'm really looking forward to this actually. Uh, paper towels. Oh, I didn't mention that. We needed paper towels. It's always good. Keep your mess clean. Keep your station clean. Chef in me always says. Here we are, here is the gold version of the RMX 1000X. I have the Platinum series in my old 2017 PC, but unfortunately the same one I have in my PC is either no longer available or no longer in stock. So I had to wait like another month just to get any of my PC parts shipped ready and waiting for me just because of the PSU that I wanted. So. Either this or wait a month, so I chose this. Let's get it open, no more. Let's get into it. Here we go. Got a tab down the bottom. No, not that I can see. Here we go. That new box smell. All the cables in the universe. I'll put this off to the side as we are not going to be using these just yet. I want to get onto the motherboard, get the M.2, the CPU, the RAM, and then we'll try and get into the case and I'll explain more along the way. More cable ties. Bonus. Oh, here we go. Important information, eh? Okay. 
There we go. Nice pristine box. Let's move it over here. Here we go. RM1000X. Ain't she a beaut? Let me just bring this over here, get a nicer, get a nicer view. She's looking good. Don't forget you need to get rid of that. Awesome sauce. Awesome, awesome sauce. So I'm pretty sure it usually goes in upside down in the case from time to time. So usually this is like upside down if you have a little viewing panel, which I do in my case. So hopefully that's not the issue. Cool, cool, cool. So what we want to do, all I want to do is I want to put it nice and flat on the table. I'll move it in one sec. What I'll do is I'll just go ahead and turn it off. Plug this one in. Just like so. Go ahead and I'll just plug this right in. Just like that, nice and easy. I'll put this off to the side, either on the floor. Come over here and get the strap. I'll obviously put this either on my wrist, or I'll probably put it on my ankle to be honest, to get it out of sight, as I was saying before. And then from here, just attach this to that, just in there. Just make sure you give it a, just a bit of a wiggle to try and make sure that there's no paint in between that, because you want it metal versus metal, not metal on paint, if that makes sense. So as you can see, nice and close, just there like that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we'll put that down, out of sight and out of mind. There we go, nice and easy, out of the way. Just connect it up to the top, under the table, straight to my ankle. Straight onto the nice little clip. Done. Alright, next up, the motherboard. Oh, look at that beauty. Look at her. Oh, righty then. Warning, Achtung. Get this bad boy out, as I'll flip that case over and use the back of it to hold the motherboard so it's not on any of the table or anything bad. Get a nice little badge, warranty, installation. We've got the BIOS manual and the user manual. So this is where you'll find all the Q codes, as the only thing I found that's bad on this board so far is that it does not have a Q code LED readout like my other board does. But that's another different thing that's going to be good on this one, so I'll have to work around and figure out a different way to find what issues... Uh, the issues, I guess. Uh, cool. Yep, yep, yep. Looking down the bottom. More stuff, more stuff. Good, good. We got the, um, the nice Wi-Fi 6. Okay, so these are the M.2 screws, as there's four of them on this motherboard. And there's that, the G connector. Okay, oh, that's for the power and that to connect all your things from your case to the motherboard itself. So all those little small little wires, this kind of manages it all for you. Nice and easy. Got some two extra SATA cables. Awesome source. So I'm going to keep one of these out because we're going to get onto the M.2 drive pronto pronto and I'll keep all of this on the top. Put that back in. Close it on up and get rid of this board. Box. Nice one. Just put that over there. Alrighty then. Alright, strap is on. Bit superstitious, so. Oh, wow. It's got a bit of weight to it. That's really got a bit of weight to it. Oh, right out. Where are we? Up the top. Anti static bags. Oh, you can hear that sticky tape just going, No, I don't want to. 
Oh, righto. Wowzers. Wowzy, wowzy, wowzers. Oh, I'm just in a bit of awe at the moment. Just give me a sec. Whew. Peeling, feeling. Peeling, feeling. All the way down the bottom. Really intricate. Fat head in the way. There we go. Any more? Should be one just here. Yep, there it is. Oh, that kind of fell off. Wasn't like stuck at all. I think that's it. With our eight pin and four pin, definitely be connecting them both up as I will be overclocking and doing some testing in another video. So make sure you stick around, hit that like button and all that good stuff. Oh, no, clean station Sharpie. Get rid of that over there. Oh, righty then. I think I'm just going to do a small screwdriver on this one. Just to undo them slightly. Cool, alright. So let's just move this on up here for now. With that. And let's get the 980 Pro PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD. 2 terabyte. I have one of these in my current PC with my Windows OS. It is awesome. I love this thing and that's why I wanted to get another one. Can't wait. 7,000 megabyte read speed. Uh, up to it says. I can't remember what it was right. I think it was like 50, maybe... Sorry, not, not 50, 5,000, 4,000, something like that. I can't quite remember. Uh, I'm sure Editor Sharpie will help me out on that one. This side, okay. There we go. Put my little handy dandy knife away. Here she is. Oh, it's nice. It's looking nice. Here we are. So small. So I've got two 10 terabytes in my current PC and most of them are almost full. So this will be a good addition. It's got four M.2 PCIe drives that I can jam all sorts of goody stuff into. Here we go. Let's just put that right there, shall we? There's one. So the reason why I'm putting it in this top one and not any of the other three down the bottom here is that this one is directly linked to the CPU. So, which will be the fastest boot sequences and all sorts of stuff. Which is exactly why I want this. Good, good, good. There goes that. Cannot forget to remove that stuff for the thermal compound. Ooh. Okay, that's weird. One screw is meant to fall out while the other one is not. Strange. That peeling feeling. Come on, focus. Focus. Manual. Go away. Stop annoying me. Alrighty then. So there's that one. There's that. Alright, so I'm not sure if you're meant to take this sticker off or not. Doesn't look like it's supposed to come off. And I'm pretty sure if they put a sticker on it, I'm pretty sure it'd be some sort of thermal way that it'd improve it. So I'll just stick with that one. Let's get this on in. Go on in there, thank you very much. 
and then as soon as I press it down it should be good there we go yep 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 that's in like Flynn I'll get that little M.2 screw from over here that came with the motherboard one of four of them let's get this little bad boy in there shall we Whoop. pinky finger to the rescue Make sure you twist it anti-clockwise as if you're undoing it just to get that one little click. There we go. Not too tight, not too loose. Beauty, nice and secure. As you can see, it's all in there. Nice and good. Alrighty then, so I'm pretty sure it goes this way. Yes, yes it does. So let's get this lined up. That's one screw lined up. Oh, okay, but I can't do it because that gets stuck, no problem. Just got a feel for it underneath. There we go. Just a little tight, not too tight because I've got to get the other one in. Whoop. Screw down. Come back here. Nice and easy. And there goes the other one. Tighten up the other one just a little bit. Not too tight. Doesn't need to be super tight. Just enough that it's on there. Cool. Alrighty then, let's get on to the CPU next. Beautiful i9 12900K. Here she is right here in her beautiful gold. Oh, look at that. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Sparkle. Boing. Here we go, the i9 12900. Shiny, shiny. Look at that thing. Oh. I'm actually real. I was actually looking forward to getting this box, not knowing if I was or not, as I got the CPU and the motherboard as a bundle from M Wave, which is an Aussie company, Australia. I don't know why I did it in that accent, but anyway, Aussie. If that makes you feel better. All right, now I've got to figure out how we open this thing. Okay, from there, and then it flips open, I guess. So handy, do that. Actually, let's get a different one. Here we go. Beauty. Little balisong. Little butterf butterfly. Or a nut. Yep, that's the one. Let's put this away. Just over there should be fine. Oh wow, yep. Wowzers. Yeah, I'll give you a view from what I'm seeing. Look at that. Looks like it just came off some sort of sci-fi production line of sorts. Uh, just put that there for now. Let's get that pointy thing away. Is this like a twist? Yes. Oh, I even opened it the right way. Look at that. Look at that. So I've got an i7 7700K in my PC at the moment, and I'm actually really thoroughly impressed on it, to be honest. It's a really nice CPU. And look at that. I haven't seen a new CPU in that long. Oh, it's pristine. Ah, oh, love it. Let's grab it out. Let's put it on the table just there, nice and safe. Let's move this over here on there. That should be all right. Alrighty then. So I do have a thermal right CPU bracket that stops the massive retention 
placed on specifically this side because of this bracket not being on the other side as well to even it out or level it out. So it replaces these four screws and this whole bracket mechanism. I'll just grab it out quickly for you anyway. So let me just jam this in and then I'll show you just because I've got it in my hand. So what you want to do is you have that little, see that little triangle there? Plus you see the name, you want the name facing out as if the motherboard was up. Like as you, the, the, it would be, the motherboard would be in your case as like that and the name you would need to see it for it to be in the right, the correct position. So let's just do that. Let's get a nice good camera angle. Here we go. Just want to slot it right in there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And normally what people do is that they'll try and take this thing off. It will normally pop off when you do this. So let's push this on down. There it goes. So I know my hand was in the way, so I couldn't quite remember. But as I did expect, it did flick off as I applied the pressure when that bracket up the top there was applied. So. How is this? It's not an insane amount of holding. I'd like to see this bracket just a little bit more evenly spaced, to be honest. Like just yay or something. Something like that. Yeah, that seems a little bit better. A little bit more even on both sides. So I'll just get the camera and I'll show you. Just to get it a little bit more even on both sides, as you can see. As it wasn't quite level before. Next up, let's get rid of this thing. And let's get this RAM in. Here we are. 64 gigs of DDR4, 3600 MHz, Vengeance RGB Pro RAM. I'm super excited to get much more RAM in my new PC. Just for the fact that my last one, I bought 24 gigs, so four, eight sticks of RAM. As soon as I put the whole PC together, within the first week or two, one of the RAMs actually failed. Ran mem test 88 and all those sorts of stuff and realized that it was faulty. And the company wanted me to send all four of them back to get the refund and all sorts of stuff which then would have left me with no computer for like a month or two while they figured their stuff out. So that's why I've got two different two, two different packs of two sticks each. So two by 16 on two packs. That's why I did it that way instead of getting the four by 16 in the one pack. Also doing it this way, instead of getting two 32 sticks of RAM at the same sort of speeds and stuff. I'd rather spread it over the four loads of the RAM than over the two specifically. Um, just be better performance, I think, in my own eyes and in my research I've found. It's not massive, but it can give me up to 5 or 10%, but if you get any percentage gained anywhere you can, Overall, if you can get it from here and a bit of there and a bit of here and a bit of there, it's all going to add up and you're going to have a 50% better PC because of that because you're squeezing little bit after little bit after little bit out of each of the little items that you think you can or you know you can or should, if anything. So moving straight onto it, let's open, it, open up these bad boys. Let's get our little butter floor knife. And figure out how we open it. And, uh, boop. I have to open up the other one again. So as I open these up, I might as well install them at the same time. Just to go, just so I don't put them down on the table or anything silly. I am the biggest unco you will know. I drop everything and anything. Here they are. Oh. Look at them. Sexy. Come. Heather. Ram sticks. Here's two of them. And these are in the dual dim. 
in the a these will go in the a1 and b1 of your ram slots which will probably be the most closer one i think but i think on this one here it is obviously the guarded ram slots so let's get those in now shall we first of all what i should have done before is i should have opened up all these little tabs it's been a while yeah roger that it's the other way all right let's try take two. Oh, there we go that was a couple of clicks in one to be honest that was good once i get it the right way around nice work sharpie Let's break it before we even turn it on. That's another click. Yep. Both of those are in. That wasn't the most satisfying one ever. There we go. There's two. A duo. Let's get the other one. Hello, my pretties. Clean up the desk. Here we go. Here's the other two. Two more 16 gigs. 32 total. 64 overall. Oh, look at that. Let's put this one down. Let's just make sure you always take your time and don't rush like I am. Just because this is my second time on camera and as always, I'm kind of nervous. Those were some good clicks. Hopefully that's a good sign to come. Why does this one on the right look a little higher? No, just me. All right, other one. Here you go, I'll let you enjoy this one as well with me. Move it back just a smidge. Just a smidge. Here we go. Oh, yeah. All four. Whew. There we go. It's nice being able to see four sticks of RAM instead of flipping three in my rig. It's a nice change. It's a very nice change. So that, as far as I'm aware, is Dunskies. All right, before we forget and before we move on to the PC case and getting the motherboard in and everything else, I need to attach the mounting bracket for the CPU cooler to the back of the motherboard so it makes it a lot easier now instead of having to fiddle around and have a case in the way and going around and all that sorts of doodads. So apparently what I always do when I build a PC is I go to PC Part Picker. And I'll have it in the, in the description below. It's a really good website and I've always used it. It will only show you what is compatible, won't let you select anything else. You can pick and choose till your heart's content and make a list for your whole big PC. I had about 10 going until I chose this one as like upgrades for my current one. And then I'm like, stuff it, I'll just get a new one. So apparently what PC Part Picker also does is that it tells you things you may or may not need. So what it suggested I should do is I should get a PC case to motherboard adapter, USB adapter. Uh, I think it was a USB 3 to USB 2 or whatever it was. It might have been C to 3 or whatever it was. I can't remember. I've got it over there. Uh, which will allow me to use all of the USBs on my case with this motherboard. So apparently this iq corsair h150i elite capillex aio water cooler does not have a proper mounting bracket for the intel 1700 even though apparently they do advertise that they can so that will be deniable but either one i have bought a separate one just in case and this was just from the same company about 15 or so dollars so it wasn't too bad let's just open this up and i want to see what sort of bracket it includes they you know what they are identical so it does include it and pc part picker was wrong so for all you out there the h150i elite capillex 
Corsair water cooler does come with a bracket that's needed for the Intel 1700 chip series. Alrighty then, let's get into this mounting bracket, shall we? Let's get it out. No, I don't want that one. I want 1700. Intel 1700. And just the mounting bracket. Yeah, so love how the Corsair give you the 3M tape so you can stick it to the back of your motherboard. So let's do that now. Let's untake that. Get rid of that. Put that down and let's get this motherboard up and at them. Strap on. There we go. Let's just turn it right on over so we can all see. Here we go. Oh, don't pick it up by that. Let's get the holes lined up. There we go. As far as I'm aware, that's all in. Good, good. So now we just flip it back over and normally it would fall off. But since it's got that tape, it will, should stay there. Now you need to get these screws. For four of them, depending on your CPU, you may notice that one or both of the sides may not be equal distance. So make sure you get the right one down and the right way up. So it looks like these are quite even on both sides. So it doesn't matter which orientation it goes in. Hopefully I'm correct in saying that. If not, we're gonna find out. So let's get all four of these in. Just need one in each of the corners just to at least attach the bracket to the motherboard without having that sticky tape just holding it. Get that in, just loosely tied in, just to get it all there so it won't fall off. Here we go, and then I can tighten it further. This should have been one of the first things I should have done, as the RAM is kind of in the way, and hopefully there won't be any clearances on this CPU block in terms of clearance. I'm just worried about these over here possibly. Hopefully it should be over the top. Yeah, go to the top one. This one's a little bit harder to access. Right up in here. Right up in there. go. I'm going to tighten them all up. It's just finger tights fine. You don't need a pair of pliers or anything fancy for this one, I don't think. Good, good. Just nice and secure. Good. Awesome. So there's the motherboard done and dusted until we need to put it in the case. So now we should be moving onto the case unless I've forgotten anything. No, not really, no. Nope. Cool. Next. Here she is. The Corsair 7000D full ATX tower. Lots of USB ports I'm gonna love, including the USB-C on the front, on my motherboard. Comes with a nice vertical GPU riser, which is why I got the vertical riser cable. The PSU shroud down the bottom, nice hinges. Here we go. And she a beaut. So here we have, we have all the straps for the back of the case, cable management. And then we've got all the screws that we need. We've got uh, extra uh, extension, I'm pretty sure that would be. And then we've got the vertical GPU riser. So I can get, instead of the GPU going in like that with your graphics card, I can have it like this. And I can actually show the nice colours and shit that I want on it. That'll be good. It'll be good. Alright, so what I need to do now is I just need to strip this whole thing down and get it ready to get the motherboard in. I'll be back in a sec.
Here we are, back again with day two for this new PC build. Yesterday we got a lot of stuff done. We connected all the storage with the M.2. We got the RAM in on the motherboard, the CPU, as well as the AIO water cooler. And if you did notice, I did promise to show you the little bracket or mounting bracket for the CPU itself to stop that overpressurization. Here we are, just here, just in the in the packet still. So what that does is that you take the mounting, the retention bracket off the motherboard itself and use the same four screws and then put this over the CPU, tighten it all up. Make sure, I have to make sure that it's not going to be over tight or under tight as apparently it can cause RAM issues and all sorts of different temperature problems. But this is supposed to sort out the unlevel of the IO the IO shield of the CPU itself. So that's the very top bit where the CPU water block connects onto. Apparently it's not very flat, especially with the original bracket, not this one, the original bracket that the motherboard comes with. So that's the whole reason why I want to try this one out in another video. So make sure you check it out. Plus I'm also thinking of comparing my i7 7700K with 1080Ti 11 gigabyte water force GPU against this new rig. So make sure you stick around for that as well. All right, let's put that back. Yeah, so we've got electric screwdriver manual. We've got our PCIe bus lane protector thingies. I can't remember what they're called. I took those out off camera before I had to go pick up my son, including this to install that vertical mount riser for the GPU. I'm not too sure if I needed to do that now or later, but that's okay. Uh, this is the adapter cable for the front header USBs on the PC case itself, as I'm pretty sure it comes with two of them and my motherboard only supports one, but it's got a spare USB two that I can convert a three down to a two. So that should be fine, hopefully. Extra cable ties, you got your pliers, you got some grippy grippies, you got, I've got extra sensors from my last PC case um, that hopefully will be compatible with this one. I don't even know, I just saw them earlier today. More uh, cable ties and all the PC case screws are just there. That is the CPU mount for the 1700 and this is the PCI4 extender as you can obviously read. That's for the vertical mount of the GPU, so that doesn't come till later. From about here, let's get that PC case up and running. Little torch there, I love that thing. I got that for $2 on Amazon or Wish or whatever it was. Little USB charge, I love this thing, it's great. Uh, let, yeah, let's get it all together. Alrighty then. Let's get that screwdriver and just get this screw undone. Uh, let's pop this off. There we go. See if we can get this back one off nice and easy. It has a screw as well. Yes, it does. Oh. I've definitely gone all out on the uh, thickness of the metal. Pretty intense, I'll tell you what. There's a little shroud. This is where our motherboard will go. Here's the inside of the case. See, we've got that little view panel I was talking about before. Hopefully that PSU won't be upside down. It'll be good to test it. Feely. Looking very schmick. Very, very schmick. Yeah. So as you see, the vertical mount riser. I have installed it, but I've taken out six of these ones. I'm not too sure if I'm going to install it here or over here, as I'm pretty sure that this one goes up and down. I did yesterday, so I'm not too sure, as I've got a water cooler, there's no fans on the GPU itself. So the only thing I'm worried about putting it here is if it's going to clear for any of the cables that I need to plug into it. Where if it may be back here, I might be able to just like wedge them through and in here and down and out of the way. So we'll see how that goes. So for this case, I want the big radiator for the CPU. I want that up the top here with the CPU block obviously just there. I'll have the graphics card. I'll have the graphics card just along here like that and I would like 
either the fans to be there or possibly even there, to be honest, would be better. It would bring them in. I could even have another one down the bottom because the GPU has two fans. So obviously it'd be like this, what, this big. So I'd be able to fit maybe another one in. Allow the clearance of the cables at the bottom nice and easy just there. Put an extra fan up the top maybe. And then I can probably move these fans behind here as like exhausts or something maybe. I would like a, a, an even in-out pressure in the case itself. So I don't want there to be too much air. I don't want there to be too little, if that makes sense. And another reason why I got this case and not a smaller one is for the fact that I really do like the storage. I already have five drives, one of them being only a 2.5 SSD, the rest of them being three and a halfs. As, yeah, so that's why I like these big drive bays. So if we come around the back, we've got some nice fan controller. Yeah, just there, as you can see. Lots of light in the background, the sun's finally decided to come out. Just there. There we go, here it is, we've got some nice cables on the back here. Good cable management style. Three two and a half inch SATA drives. Got lots of storage for more fans. PSU storage down there. Fan hub, cable management, out the wazoo. Love it. All right, let's lay this case down and let's get this motherboard in, shall we? As, oh, okay, before I do that, I'm gonna get rid of this back plate right here. There we go, cool, so that's out of the way. I should have no problem putting this in. This case, without those panels, is actually really light. It's an insane difference in weight. So this is the standoff pin right here that you need to, it helps your motherboard stay in the right spot to line up all the screws nice and easy. So now I just need to go through and go into the PC case bag. Just tip them here so you can see. All right, so we've got all our screws for the motherboard. We'll need three, five, eight, eight of these. Then we're gonna need that smaller screwdriver, something a little bit more delicate. All right, and then let's get our motherboard out. We do have our ankle bracelet on. Just put that box down there and out of the way. All right, here we go, in she goes. So the standoff screw should be around there somewhere, so we'll need to go up and in. Let me just get my fat head out of the way. There we go, that seems to be in. Just give it a bit of a wiggle, that should always tell. All the screw holes seem to be lining up nicely. Looking good, looking good. All right, let's get these screws in, shall we? So we got one in the top right. Now don't forget you want to turn anti-clockwise until you hear it click so you're not threading the screw in the wrong way. Now as soon as I feel it biting, I stop screwing and I move on to the next one. So remember, anti-clockwise, click. Might need to do that again. Otherwise a little bit more of a difficult screw to get in. Good old pinky finger trick. It's always good to have a magnetic screwdriver or a magnetic headed screwdriver, I should say. Makes life a lot easier. Here we go, in the middle right. Twist it around to the left, click, and straight down. That was a nice and easy one, that one. That was really easy. Here we go, another one nice and in. Here we go on the bottom left. One in the middle on the bottom. Just note you don't want to apply too much pressure just yet, because you can always go back after you've screwed them in as tight as you want and check. Measure twice, 
cut once. There we go. All right, now let's start in the top left and let's just tighten these up, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Here we are, she's all in. Nice and tight, all eight screws. Nicely done, nicely done. And then a nice IO shield if I can. Rawr, I've got this, everything in the way. Everything in the way, but yeah, there it is right there. I'm using a ladder as a stand for the camera and my, and my phone. Yeah, cool. All right, next thing we should do is get some cables plugged in, I'm thinking. Yeah, cables then CPU cooler, because otherwise the CPU cooler might get in the way of everything. Cables out the wazoo. All right, now obviously you're not gonna need all of these. No one ever usually does, unless your rig's five years old and you're replacing one of them. I need one of them for power to SATA, for the drives and for the CPU cooler itself. We need the CPU big pin. We need the small 8 pin to 8 pin for this one here, plus an extra 4. So let's get that extra 4 if we can. So at least the CPU, as obviously with the 4 pin, you don't always need to connect it unless you're doing overclocking. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's get these out of the way. I need to get the... No, I don't need to get the K at the SATA out. That should be all right. Let's get this PSU and all the good jazz. All right, here's all the cables for the front of the case. And then here's all these little small ones that our motherboard was nice enough where well, they were nice enough to give us one to get rid of that issue. There's the reset. Here's the power. Just slots nicely in there. Nice and easy. In you go. In you go. Beauty. There we go. And then we'll just slot that through and that should just go nicely in where we need it to go. Cool, we can probably slot this up right through here and then I'll connect it just like so done cool all right next is one of the USB 3s I'm pretty sure this is that's the USB C I'm sure there's the audio let's get the audio out of the way audio there we go Trying to get some cables and that out of the way. There we go. All right, anyways, let's get this, these big cables in, especially the 24 pin big boy. Huge. So this one will need to come through up the top. Yeah, afraid that was gonna happen. I'm gonna need to move the shroud out of the way so I can get these cables in. There it goes. That came off. That leaves me with a lot more room. Now this can go through now. All right, let's get this 24 pin beast in. There we go. Fan the cables out a bit nicer because we're going to have to fold them down quite a bit if we want that shroud back on. Fans, yep. Just trying to figure out where two of these fan cables were from. I was like, oh yeah, that's right. The case comes with fans, Sharpie. So I'm pretty sure this one here is the USB C, which is that one right there. So what I'm going to probably do. I'm gonna go underneath this thing right here. If I can. Thank you very much. 
turn it around and plug that right in there like that. Next is this USB, which I can again feed through that, connect that right onto here. Nice and easy. Get this out of the way. Most likely will need that cable. Get this into there. And then just a spare USB down the bottom. This one here seems pretty good. There we go. There's that one in. So that's the USBs all done. I'm just doing a bit of cable management in the process to get things nice and clean. All right, next up is the eight pin. There we go, the other way around. Oh, there we go, yep, lift off. All right. Flip it around, because the PSU goes in the back, not in the front, and as you can see, I've done a bit of cable tidying. Just got this like that out of the way. I'll fix that up later. We got the 24 pin, and we got the eight pin just here. Yeah, nice and neat. I haven't got anything holding this just yet, but that's fine. Everything's behind it. Everything's nice there, but I don't really need that one just yet. Here she is, from being on the floor. You can see we've bitten into it just a little bit just to make sure that the paint has been exposed to actually have the anti-static wrist strap to work because on paint it won't work it's not metal it's paint obviously little things little things hey, hey it's gonna be the right way around I think all right let's see if we can get all these big pins in here we go There we go. Here's that one. One right next to it. That there. Let's go ahead and get rid of this drive bay. As I forgot there was two, but they should be nice and easy to come out. Slide off to the right or left or whatever it is and then they come right on out nice and simple same exact sort of design as the 750d uh, corsair obsidian case i have already in my older pc another little thumb drop little thumb screw there we go good good she's nice and secure she ain't going nowhere that's what we want to hear Good, good. Power supply in. She's looking good so far. Just trying to think if there is anything else before I get to the CPU cooler. Get those fans. Yes, yes there is. The SATA power cable, uh, which normally powers all your three and a half and two and a half uh, uh, inch hard drives and SSDs and stuff like that, but obviously I need one of these to power the CPU cooler, plus any other hard drives from my old case that I'm going to use. So this cable here is the one that will power all the fan hub that comes with the case. So you can just have one little thing that you can connect onto the actual motherboard itself that'll control all your fans. So let's just power this bad boy up. Easy as one, two, boop, done. All right, next is the CPU water cooler. All right, let's get this top bit off. They don't separate these screws from the plate, which is brilliant. Oh, do they? Oh, they do. So here's that panel that we can just attach that CPU radiator to. Quite easy, which I like. All right, the CPU cooler, safety and warranty, all the fans in the world, 
Now, what I want to do is I'll probably want to attach the fans to the right the metal bit, this top bit here first, and then attach the radiator. Or I might have to do it all in one. So let's just pull everything out and let's have a look. There we go. What's that? Oh, it's an IQ fan hub. Righto. There she is, in all her glory. It's a big radiator. Good block. All right. So it looks like we've got... I think that is a USB header. Now I'll have to read up on how to connect this one up. All right, let's just see where we can go in terms of limits. That would work. That would definitely work. And that's what I'm going to do. So normally on any of the Corsair fans, you'll actually see an arrow pointing somewhere and where are the, uh, the direction of the air is going. Now, if you see very faintly just there, you see where the arrow is? It's pointing up. And then there's an arrow pointing to the left. Yep, to the left. That means that fan will spin that way while pushing the air through that way. So I'm wanting it to push the air or pull the air through. Now, do I want the exhaust air or not going through this? I'm thinking I want it to. No, I'm going to have it pull through it from the top of the case. And then I've got to get the orientation. So this way, and then that way. Yeah, because I want them to be pulling from or pushing. No, I think pushing would be the best, to be honest. Pushing it from the air, from the inside of the case. So this goes there. This will need to turn around and attach like here on this so where am I thinking I'm thinking that maybe about here ish don't want it against the glass or anything we'll get our little screws again so these times I'm going to use this one these little small ones I think they should be fine oh which will need washers. Remember, if you're doing something like this, try and use washers whenever you can. There we go, there's one, there's two, three. Just slowly working my way down. Just for now, I just want them threaded, just so if I need to move it or something like that, forwards or backwards, I can. Just while it's sitting there. There we have it. So she's in. Just tighten them up a little bit, just to thread them properly so they don't unthread with vibrations or something. Just while I'm like moving the case or something. <clears throat> Missed one. Not that it really matters, but just for symmetry's sake. There we go. And there she is for now, just lightly fitted, but those fans are nicely done. And all nicely secured. This thing looks pretty beast-like so far. Which is what we want. We like beast like. Beast like is good. Back to the main case. Let's get this chunky boy in. So, the way we wanted it was up and in like this. And then this thing should just be able to slot right in. Oh, up the top, the cables weren't in the way. One, two, and three cables out of the way. Plonk him in. Beauty. There she is. And all her might. Not looking too bad. Not looking too bad at all. Core. There we go. 
Now you can see it a little bit better. Good, good. All right, so next is that, but let's tighten this bad boy up so he won't move. Uh, for that one, I'm just going to do it manually because I don't want to uh, strip these screws up the top here for any reason. So let's just do a quick mounting test without it touching, obviously. No need for it to just yet. Okay, that's as far as it'll go over and then that will fit on nicely. Just like so. Right, look at that. There's the clamps just there. Perfect. It's nicely out of the way. It kind of blends in with this big boy and it shouldn't cl it should clear all the stuff. That should look all right. All right, now I'm going to get some thermal paste after I get these done. Okay, cool. Cool. That's in. Let's get that thermal paste on, shall we? So let's... Ugh. Lay him flat. All right, next up is the CPU cooler. Let's get some thermal paste on there, shall we? I'm using the Arctic Silver. I've had this for a while now, and it's very good. All right, this is the bit that always makes me nervous. All right, for this one, I'll probably want to use quite a decent amount. And then I can smear it elsewhere. And if I need more, I can add it. Okay, I've given it a good smear as much as I'm kind of willing to do. And then from there, I'll just give it another little dab. Just on the top, just to be safe. Just to give it that little bit extra if it needs it. There we go, that should be fine. There we go. So that's just about as far as I'm willing to go, just nice and quick. I know everyone does it so much different, but that little bit in the middle, just there, that's a little bit more of a glob, just to give it a bit more of a smear and smoother edges. First time I'm doing this, but I'm being a little bit more particular when it comes to that, just for the fact that I know it can be quite difficult. So I need to get rid of this pre-applied thermal paste right here. So I need to go get some metho and a paper towel and get rid of that. I'll be back in one second. All right, here we have some eucalyptus, water soluble. That's what I'm just gonna use quickly. I couldn't find any metho and just some paper towels. Just make sure if you're using a chemical to clean this, make sure you're not getting a chemical or using a chemical that will harm the copper back plate of this. See how it's all nice and clean? If I did one more, that'd be much better. But that should be fine all the same. Here we are, so need to get this in the right orientation. It's always the better option. Let's get that peeling feeling. Oh yeah. Probably should have left that on until last. And then what you wanna do is you want it to go straight down and give it a bit of a shimmy. There we go, give it a bit of a wiggle. Now I'll put all those screws down temporarily, except one. We're just gonna do them all up so it will hold it on there and then we can tighten them all evenly together. So just in this, make sure the CPU block doesn't move while on the thermal paste and the CPU itself. You don't wanna put any air bubbles or anything even though it's a pretty flat surface. Just the better performance you can get, as I said earlier, or yesterday, the better performance you can get from every little thing you can, the better overall it will be. There we go. And then we can just tighten these up individually. Don't want them too tight. Otherwise, the CPU may not register and it won't turn on. There we go. That's fine. That's fine. That should be all right. Do a bit more. 
Nice and solid. Beautiful. There she's in. One, two, three, and four. Shiny. Apart from my fat fingerprint right in the middle of it. All right. And then I'm not exactly sure how these ones all work and what this one connects on to, to be honest, as the instruction manual is really not clear whatsoever. As, oh, okay, so that'll need to go into that RGB hub that they gave us. So here we have the Commander Pro, I think this would be. That would allow all your fans, all the RGBs, which is perfect. I love it. I was actually going to buy this separately at a later date, but I'm glad this actually came with it. And then that's where, yeah, so all the RGB that I can use now. And then, oh, sorry, the RGB here, and then all the fans there. And then that's where the AIO water cooler will go, just there. So let's stand this up and let's get that installed. So let's unbunch those cables from the AIO. And let's see what sort of range distances we have. I don't know if you heard that, but my kitten of that is actually meowing in the background. Meow, 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 meow. Oh, very talkative today, aren't you, Maverick? Am I going to have some room to jam it there? Par that didn't used to be there back in the day. So either that or we can get rid of these two. As everything's like M.2 nowadays. And I've got four, like three more I can use in my, on my board itself. So I could just stick it right here maybe. Yeah, something along the lines of like here. And then this can probably come up and in. Yeah, it's either that or nothing, pretty much. That's all right. This right here should be okay. That and around. So let's just plug this in. Like white with white, I'm guessing. There we go, I guess. Uh, then this needs to come down. They need to go down. So even that. I'm just going to hide it over here a bit more. Just pinch it up there. Those three, that 3M tape and let's stick it on. One there, one there. Should do perfect. Yep, cool. Alright, let's get this in, shall we? So we're going to pinch that there. Let that go straight through, right in the middle. Leave some room for everything else. There we go. That should do nicely. And then let's get rid of that thing. Here's another VWM cable, which there's conveniently one right here, right next to it for us. Thank you very much. So let's just hide that over here for now. Get this plugged in. Just like so. Now I've got another USB. So I'll just plug that into a spare USB we have on the front. There's the AIO water cooler in. And fan hub. Well, technically now two fan hubs. I don't know what I'm going to do. There we go. She's in. She's connected. She's up and running. Let's get rid of this. Clean up a bit. Technically, we could actually get rid of this and just use this. So, I didn't really quite expect this one. Three. There. That's that done for the fans and everything for the AIO. All we need to do is just the RGBs. Which goes exactly the same way. And I'm going to connect them exactly the same numbers as well. So, what I want to do is I want... The fans down the bottom there from the graphics card, I want it to be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then the back one will just have a black one, I think. Because I do have one extra spare 
RGB fan I can use, which I think will work perfectly as I'll have my radiator for the graphics card down the bottom here facing that way. So it's pulling air from the front of the case. And then I'll have another HP 120, I think it was, Corsair RGB fan above that radiator. So hopefully it should kind of balance it out just a little bit. If not, I'll put the fan underneath the radiator. See how we go. Cool. Let's see if I can get a bit of cable management going here somehow. That should be good. That's in for now. All right. Next off, we need to get the CPU fan up into where it says CPU underscore optional, as this is the optional a all-in-one cooler instead of just a fan. So there's only one real way to put this on. Just smack it in there just like that, nice and easy, done. And then when you turn the computer on, when it whinges and complains about going that it has CPU fan read error, that's why. Just turn that function off and you're good to go. Good to grow. Time to get the piece de resistance, the GPU, and the riser. So this is where it could be a little difficult. So let me just whack this off and then we'll continue. All right, so let's get that riser. Here she is. All right, let's put this down. Let's open up this GPU and see what we got. The main event, or at least one of the two that we all expect. CPU and then the GPU. Oh. And I myself haven't even opened the box yet. As you can see, it's still got its factory seal on. Another handy dandy little knife. Yes, I'm a chef. I like my knives. Here we go. Nice little booklet. Of all the quick start guides and things you may need. We'll get to that soon. Oh, here we go. Got a nice little sticker. Got the beautiful GPU. Oh, here we go. I was really curious to see if I was going to get this or not. Little extreme gigabyte. Little dude, how cool is he? He's pretty cool. Um, seems to be like some solid plastic. Sturdily built, I have to say. I'll have him blue tacked somewhere on my desk. All right, here we go. I like it how the fans are already mounted. That's always a good bonus. Here we go. That's just about everything we need. Make sure that there's nothing underneath it. Doesn't feel like it, to be honest. Here we go. Just have the radiator there. Here we have the RTX 3080 Extreme AIO water cooler, 240mm, absolute beauty. Look at her. Compared to my 1080 Ti, this is on it. All right, let's put this off to the side and let's get the case back out. All right, so this is something I've never done before with a vertical riser cable. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, so this is where it will obviously go in. Goes in there for it to bend and then go into your graphics card like so. So in there, out there. Nice and easy. Hopefully. So he said. So he said. Now unfortunately with the AIO water cooler. You need to do a little bit more finagling. So what it should do, I'm thinking it's going to be around about like this ish. Something like that ish. All right, so let's get our little protective thing off. Here we go. 
Then we've got to get this plugged in. Okay, needs to go in sideways, yep, no problem. So there's a little slot just here that you need to like hook it in and then it will allow you to like click the rest of the way in. So that was kind of weird. Okay, so what it looks like I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to move this vertical cable up to give myself a little bit more room. So let's do that now quickly. Three. And it's riveted. It's riveted in. Okay. Okay, maybe if I move it up to the front of the case, which I was afraid might have happened. Three more of those screws. Three more of these, lots and lots. And then hopefully the graphics card can go in there. I just don't want to bend this cable too much to the point that it may break or like something, but there's not a hell of a lot of room, I tell ya. I don't know how they expect you to do that, to be honest. Like, it gives you no room for anything down the bottom. Alright, scrap it. Next. Ain't gonna work. Sick of it. You can go in upside down until I fix that, because I'm not fiddling with the bastard anymore. Come here. Let's hear that all entire click. Not so much. And then let's get, that's a boy. Ah. One. Ah, ah, ah. There we go. Get that double screw on there. Let's get one of these back. Just neaten this one up just a bit. And stay updated as we, I shall fix the vertical mount riser as it's my first time, so. Something was bound to somewhat go wrong, I guess. But hey, it's easily avoidable, easily fixed. All right, so next thing, I need to get rid of those fans, which I should have done to begin with. But anyways, gonna be done now. That can go there. All right, let's get rid of these fans. Use the electric screwdriver. Looks like we actually have some fan extension cables, which is pretty good if we actually needed them. Alright, now that that's in there and that's out. Good, good. I guess these are, what, pre-installed? Yeah, feels like it. Okay. Next up, let's get this bad boy in. About as high as we can get it, without it getting in the way. Here we go, just attaching the radiator on the front where I want it, and then I can hopefully maybe put a fan just here. It'd be quite nice. And then I gotta get two eight pin connectors, which can probably just run straight under and over there, or even over here maybe. All right, let's get power to that monstrosity. Here we go, she's nice and in, looking pretty good. Got the nice radiator. It's not too kinked, hopefully. It's looking good. It's looking real good. Hey. All right. Powered. And hopefully golden. Got lots of USBs. Here's for the Wi-Fi. Got some stronger USBs, the Wi-Fi 3, the HDMIs and a 2.5 gigabit LAN or internet cable. I will be using this highly to connect one computer to the other via a network switch. 
stay tuned. I will be having a video out with that as well. Uh, we've got some line in, line out for the mics, and we've got that optical thing for the sound, I think it was. Some display ports and some HDMIs. One of them has fallen out. Uh, it's just over there. I did find it. Cool. Let's get into opening up the new screen, the new monitor. Here we have the Gigabyte M32Q Gaming Monitor, 80 centimeters, 32 inch for all you Freedom Unit users out there. We've got all the stuff down there. I'm pretty sure you can read. I don't need to read out for you. Look at this beast. So the reason why I also got this is I want to try out the function that it has, which allows you to use the same keyboard and mouse for two separate computers. Can't remember what exactly that was called, as I'm pretty sure I'll just do it in the review or editing or whatever it is afterwards. So yeah, here we go. Let's open it up and find out what we got. Looks pretty good. Looks really, really good. Good turnability. Good accessing. That way, that way. Oop. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. Here we are back again. I did end up changing this cable right here. Just for the fact that it wasn't the right one. I had two 8 cables instead of one cable that went into the two 8s. So, much better. Much better. And then with that spare cable, I've then split it into four. So that 8 pin can be halved into a four. And that's what I've done right up the top there with that extra CPU header. Perfect. Or the motherboard plug per se. All right, uh, with that being said, let's give her a switch on the back. And, well, all right, here we go. Uh, take four, hopefully. Or not. Oh, I think we've now got power. Okay, um, oh, Houston, we have power, we have liftoff, all the fans, all the fans are spinning, I hear water fluid, as you can hear it, see what happens on the screen, oh, there you go, it just kicked on again, the screen is on. Put it on HDMI 1. Just give it a couple seconds to think about it. Oh! We have BIOS! We have BIOS! Houston, we have BIOS! Hallelujah! There we go, as you can see, it's reading the 64 gigs of RAM, A1, B1, A2, B2. We've got 23 degrees CPU. 25 on the motherboards, roughly. It's looking good. It's looking real good. The optional fan is reading. CPU fan. XMP is disabled. Make sure you stick around. Let's get rid of these peeling feelings, shall we? Oh, that was pretty cool. Ooh. There we go. Whew. And there we have it. There we have it. Z690, Aorus Elite, AX DDR4, i9 12900K, 64 gigs. I'll boost the frequency on the memory and everything like that once I get 
windows and everything all done. Ain't she a beaut? Ain't she a beaut? Hardly even spinning. Oh no, it doesn't look like they're really spinning, but that's because of the frame rate of the camera itself. They're spinning as normal. And there's some ones at the front. Very shagadelic. And then you get like an upside down view. Sorry to everyone. But hey, there's an upside down view of what you'd see from the front of the case when I get that proper vertical mount working. That pain in the butt, but I'd rather a working PC right this way. Drops phone. Right this very second, than a non-working one. It's even got some nice backlights on the back of the motherboard. How nice is that? And before I forget, here's the M.2 SSD 980 Pro 2TB NVMe drive I've got there. Let's see if anything comes up. Uh, it does register that there is one plugged in to the PCIe X16, the one that's properly connected to the CPU. The other two don't run as fast. And then the SATA is nothing because I've got no SATA cables plugged in as I have no physical kind of hard drives, like two and a half or three and a half HDDs or SSDs, whatever you want to call them. G'day all and welcome back with day three. Yes, it's been a few days. Yes, I've been editing the same video you're watching now on this rig. Plus, I'd like to finish off a lot of the stuff I should have done the other day, including the proper PCIe extender with a 90 degree angle so I don't have to worry about the clearance underneath here. Can't wait to get that in. I'll also want to be doing a few other changes as well, including flipping these fans so it's pulling fresh air from the outside of the case in. And I'll be leaving this radiator right here for the graphics card to keep pulling air from the inside of the case outwards. That's perfectly fine by me. And then this exhaust fan is obviously pushing from the inside of the case outwards. So that's three in and three out. So that should be perfectly fine. Plus I got another three stock fans that came with this case, including this one here, that if need be, I can put right behind this shield to get some more in or out pull depending. I'd like a nice even flow of in and out pressure so it's not pulling any dust or anything like that from any of these little holes or whatever it may be around the case near the doors like up here for instance. So let's get these fans flipped around and a few other things. I'll also be talking about on why I bought this graphics card. For instance, why I bought the 3080 instead of the 3090 Ti. I'll get to that in a later point. So other than that, let's get into these fans and I've got another really old hard drive. I want to see if A, it still works, B, is still viable to use still, and C, if it has some of my old game screenshots on it. So as you see the fans up the top there, I needed to angle that top bracket to be able to get it, get to these screws up the back there. That's perfectly fine, so let's flip those around. Get that fan switched out to the new one from my old 2017 rig. It's still brand new in its box. There she is right there. Leave these radiators the way they are. Get that graphics card remounted into that nice vertical slot right here. I can't wait. Here's one screw in with the fan around the correct orientation as I never should have gone with the way it went through the radiator from the dirty air inside the case in the future I'd never really want to do that as in my older rig it certainly isn't like that here we go there's one ah 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 four and Flip up oh, the ram sticks are getting in the way. All right, there we go. There's another one flipped upside down. Get these screws in to secure it. Four, two, oh, oh, oh. There we go. Flip it around the right way. Get these screws back in. Yeah. So the reason why I've got the fans also on this side of the radiator and not in between this is because a, I'd like to see the lights, and b. 
it's much quieter having a pull configuration through the radiator than it would to be having a push. So I just know that in the future, but also I think having it sucking through the radiator, pulling through the radiator, I think is colder air than it would be pushing. I know I could be wrong there, but that's my opinion. But either way, it'll get several degrees colder air now that it's pulling from the outside of the case. Because I completely forgot the end of day two. I didn't realize which configuration these fans were in, in a pull or a push. And I put my hand in front of it yesterday when I was doing some stress tests. Um, it was like, it was really quite warm. Four. Three fans! Oh, oh, oh. Alrighty then. Now, all we do is lift this up just a little bit and slot it back in. Let's get those thumb screws back in because that is done. One right in there. Apparently I had to thread through the grill itself before going into the case properly. Now that that's all done, let's change this back fan or the rear exhaust fan to that new HD120 RGB Corsair fan that I got in 2017. It's still brand new in the box, as you can tell. It's still got its factory seal and all that sort of jazz. So let's get into it. Here she is, typical old 120 mil fan. I know that back fan is a 140, but that's perfectly fine. I'd rather an RBG that had nice flow from front to back. All right, so let's get this old one out and let's get the new one in. Thread the cable back and there we go. There she's out. Now we've got three stock fans, 140 mils that we can put up the back here if need be. So that, that'll be really handy if, if I need. I'm just more worried about the noise, to be honest, than anything else. Because it's gonna be right on my desk, as you'll see at the end of this video. I'll do some nice flashovers of the PC showing it all up, up and close. So make sure you stick around for that as well. It's all gonna be finished today, I flippin' hope so. All right, new fan. So this is going to be an exhaust fan. It needs to go in that orientation to make sure it pulls out through the back of the case from inside. Four fans. Oh, oh, oh. Done. Fans are all in like thin. Kind of looks a little bit weird with the smaller fan. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think if I should leave this or go back to the other one. All right. Finally, it is time to use the new GPU riser for the vertical mount. Let's get into it. Here we go, so there's the bracket that I'll need to put it in. That'll need to go there. Alrighty then, wish me luck. Let's get these screws out. Two. All right, those two screws can just go there for now with that. Right, I need to push the button on the back. So the graphics card will come out instead of just brute forcing it. All the cables will clear. All right, let's grab this thing out, shall we? If we can, nice and easy. It's not attached to anything. There we go, beautiful. That really bad sound was it grinding on this little bit because it hit these, but that's perfectly fine, nice and safe. So let's plug the graphics card into the riser cable. Here we go, just like so, and then let's lock it over. Here we go, that's nice and secure. It's looking nice. That looks like it would work. Let's see if I can tie it in. There's a little bit of an, a gap, funny enough, now down the bottom. And hopefully these little tabs should hold it quite nicely. Need to get the back to tighten these up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at that. All right, now the piece de resistance. stance. Let's plug it into the motherboard. Before I plug it in, I'll show you quickly. As you see, there's a bit of a gap underneath of the graphics card now, which is kind of weird with the problem we had before, but that's all in. Before I plug it in, I wanted to show you. Here it is right here, and this is where we need to plug it in, right into the motherboard right there. So let's get this done. Right on camera, hopefully this focus will allow me push it in. 
Oh, that was a nice good click. There we go, that seems to be in. Yep, seems to be in. Give you a nice little top down view of in there. It's looking good, it's looking all right. And I didn't get a too big a one, I actually got a 200 millimeter one. As you can see, I've got the new one just there. And yes, I am still yet to sell this. I haven't even listed it to, for sale yet. So I went from a 300 mil to a 200 mil because I didn't want any overhang. I didn't want any overhang like just here to like block anything else on top of it. So there we go. She's up and running. She's in there nice and good. RMX 1000, RM1000. Why do I keep doing that? Uh, all the fans up the top there around the right way. Got the new fan at the back there. We should be able to plug that in up the back. So I'll flip the case around so you can see. I uh, fixed this as it was kind of doing my head in. It wasn't even when I fixed it last and now that's all done. That's good. I'm going to keep that Seder Bay just there in there and that's why I'm having this and not putting an extra fan or something down here. So that should be good all the same. Whew, I'm a little out of breath actually. I'm really excited to see this thing on and everything like that. So I'll, I'll share with you when I first turn it on as I've got my monitor right there. Ready and waiting with a whole bunch of cables and my new keyboard, all sorts of stuff. I just got my new mouse today. Those cables are just the fan extension cables in case I need them, including a SATA and that old hard drive. This thing is ancient. I don't even know if it'll still work. I don't think it will, to be honest. But yeah, that's it. Cool. All right, next thing to do, and the last thing to do, I'm pretty sure, is get these fan connected into that hub at the back. So let's move this out of the way, flip it around and good to go. So I'm guessing that's the RGB. Yes, sir, it is. And then that one is the fan. There we go, there we go. Cool, that exhaust fan is now in. Let's get this cable managed a little better. All right, next is this old hard drive. I do not even know if this is going to work at all. It's a Hitachi Desk Star Feb 2009 date. It is 500 gigabytes, half a terabyte. So it's not the worst thing. And it's not the best thing. Feb 09. Wow. Cool. Now that we've got that panel off, I can finally get that old hard drive in here to see if it works. Which is right in front of me. Uh, if I need to go this way. To be honest, I think I'm honestly just wasting my time here because I don't think this drive will work. Slide it back on in there. Let's get a spare SATA. We go into the power of that old hard drive. The SATA that the motherboard came with. Let's get this plugged in. Okay. On my motherboard, the SATAs are down the bottom. So let's use the 90 degree for the back of the HDD and the nice flat one to go straight in. There we go. Nice little clip. Uh, what I might do is I might actually leave that there and have my monitor off to the side and see if I can capture both at the same time. So let me see if I can set that up. Clean this out of the way and get my monitor. Plug it all in. And then you'll see the very first turn on of it all. Here we go. She has power. She's all plugged in. Keyboard, mouse, HDMI, power, power. I haven't bothered putting any of the doors on just yet. Alrighty then, here we go. Three, two, one, let's go. Yes! Here we have it. She's up and running. In her glory. I'll fix that backlight fan. Don't worry about that one. I'll fix that. Doesn't even look like the power is on, to be honest. Or at least I might need to just set it up, to be honest. That's all right. Oh, the light's up the top. One of them fans are not working. I'll need to fix that. 
Not too sure about that one. Probably just one of the connectors just got jiggled. And that back one's fine. All right, let's power it back down, get that fan up and running, and we'll continue. Here we go. Okay, I found the issue. It's actually grabbing. It's grabbing the radiator. Build the PC, they said. It'll be easy, they said. Nah, it's the journey. It's the whole journey of building the PC in itself. It's not just about the PC. I enjoy building them as much as I, I love overclocking and playing on and gaming and all sorts of stuff. So, here we go. Cables are now out of the way. That was the problem, 100%. I'm calling that one like right now. Four. Five fans. Oh, oh, oh. Technically. Technically four, but hey, who's counting? Oh. Top mount, back in, thumb screws, one, two, good. All right, so now that fan should be A-OK. -okay. That's all nice and secure. Cable back in. Turn the power back on. All right then, three, two, one, take two, go. LED on the back is still not working. It is a very old fan, so I'm kind of not surprised, but I am at the same time. I don't know, I'll have a look at that. The only thing I can say that I'm really not liking are the LEDs up the top there on those fans for the radiators. They're kind of sticking through, but at the same time, performance anywhere you can, as I've said throughout the video, overall will give you better performance. I'm not going to repeat myself again, as you know what I'm talking about. There we go, back fan I'll need to figure out as that RGB is not working. So it's either that or I've got the cables around the wrong way. All the cable management looks a lot messier than it really is. And that hard drive that we installed definitely works, which was really weird. There she is right there. A nice riser cable there. Uh, a couple things I wanted to talk about before I let you go, before I do the showcase and everything like that. Now, the graphics card, I, the reason why I made this computer and did everything you see today is for the fact that it's a gaming PC. I want to play in 2K res and record and or stream in 2K resolution as well. So that's 1440 pixels. The whole reason why I want that and not 4K or anything like that is you need a bigger budget, you need a bigger screen, better screen, more money, all sorts of stuff. And compare from this water-cooled graphics card to the 3090 Ti version, even at the discount prices on both of them, it's still like $1,200 difference and more expensive for the 3090 Ti. So I'd rather save the $1,200 put that towards my son or put that towards my family, my wife. But at the same time, that's why I saved $1,200 on getting this one where I can probably wait for the 40 series graphics cards maybe and get an upgraded one of that. Put this one in my old rig with the i7 7700K. It would go absolutely fantastically as that's the bottleneck on that rig is my graphics card. It has a 1080 Ti Water Force as well, 11 gigabyte um, overclockable graphics card. It's fantastic, it's lasted so long and I've never had a problem, touch wood. But make sure you stay tuned for any upcoming videos where I will, I will be overclocking this PC you see right here and connecting this thing with a network switch. I think it's a Netgear switch and some Cat6 uh, Ethernet cables to try and connect this computer here and my i7-7700 1080 Ti Water Force 11 gigabyte computers both together so I can, break, I can game on this monitor. I'll have the two screens on the end. The one on the right you, you see is for my older PC, so that's for the recording side. The one in the middle, you see that's this one right here, will be right in the middle that I'll be gaming on. And the left hand screen will be for like chat or anything like that it may be 
like temperatures I'm watching or OBS as the MDI plugin requires OBS to be open on both PCs with the plugin installed, but I won't be necessarily recording on this PC, I'll be editing everything you see, including this video. I've already done some in the last week. Yes, it's not day three, it's actually day eight or nine for the fact that I had to go pick up my son from school once more, everything else had to go in. I had a few meetings, had some work, had some cleaning, had some all sorts of stuff that got in the way before I could finish this off. But in the meantime, I've been editing what you see today, so I really do hope. Um, you either learnt something, you had some fun, uh, you liked my content so far, if anything like that. Uh, I'm not too sure. Make sure you comment below uh, if you're looking forward to the overclocking, me comparing the i7 to the i9 at the same uh, speeds of the CPU, as well as connecting them both together for that recording, as I was saying earlier. So with that being said, thank you so much, so, so much if you're still here watching the video for the fact that it's been an absolute pleasure building this and building it for you. I will fix that, hopefully. If not, I'll probably swap it back to the other one. Um, so that should be okay anyways. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more for the other upcoming videos, and thank you so much once again for sticking around. Till next time, stay sharp. Ciao.